Perfect. I'm ready. Okay, terrific. Abla. Hey, congratulations for a lot of your accomplishments in, in your career so far. Thank you so much. It is terrific. And not only that, um, I, I believe you're call, you're calling from Dubai and you just got got from can got back from Cannes. I mean, that's a that you have quite a busy schedule, is what I'm actually getting at. I do, yes. It's always a flight to another. <laughs> <laughs> now um let's uh, let let's start with this um uh, i understand um before modeling and before um you know acting you were in something else you were a fashion what was it a fashion designer or what yes i was a stylist and uh i, w I used to design for the brand guess in the headquarters in los angeles so how did that actually came about um as a start of your career so I finished uh, fashion school uh, in LA and my parents, we have uh, friends in common with Mohammed Hadid, who is the father of Gigi and Bella Hadid. So they asked him if he could help me in fashion because they are very big in, fa in the fashion industry, the whole family. So he introduced me to Mr. Paul Marciano, who is the owner uh, and the founder of Guess. And so I had the meeting with him. And the first thing he said is like, oh, I want you to model for me. At that time, it was the beginning of social media. I just came from Morocco. You're very close minded. We never, I never, I didn't even have an Instagram or anything. And then he used to show, he was showing me like all these girls in swimsuits. I was like, no, 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 I cannot do this. He wants my family to kill me. But, um, I work in fashion. I just graduated and I would love to work for you. So he said, oh, and by the way, he's Moroccan French and I'm Moroccan and we both speak French. So we really clicked on the first second we we got along and he said, oh, if you want to work for me, come to the office. You can spend the day in every department and pick one and then you're going to start and you're going to learn like an internship. And I said, yes, I want... The first department I went, it was uh, photo shoot production and um, it didn't go so well and uh, I didn't really like it. <laughs> and then the second one I went to was Thailand and actually I did love it. And my first ever campaign was with uh, Hailey Baldwin and it was her first ever fashion campaign too, actually. Wow. So you always had an interest in fashion? Yes, since I'm very since since I'm a baby. Now, um, cu culturally, um, being Moroccan, what 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 is the culture of fashion in uh, as you grew up? Uh, I think so. My love for fashion came because my dad used to travel a lot back and forth from from Morocco to the U.S., and he used to bring me all the. You know, those juicy couture outfits and all the Tommy, Tommy Hilfiger. And no one in Morocco had this because in Morocco, especially before, not a lot of people used to travel, especially to America. So I used to show up at, in school with all the cool outfits and all the trends. And I think my love for fashion grew this way. Uh, in general, in the country, it's developing right now. But uh, we, we, I think Morocco, we're like, a unique place where fashion it's mainly like traditional outfits it's our traditional dresses that we wear for weddings and but a lot of fashion designer comes to morocco like we have the museum of ysl a lot of big fashion designer used to live there because of the color the culture the food the smell the it's it's very rich so you can get inspired a lot and Fashion is growing a lot and it, it, it's attracting a lot of luxury brands to do fashion shows. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's growing. It's there, but it, it's pretty, it's there, but it's growing very fast. So you yourself, your career changed with the times as uh, Mor Morocco culture has changed. Tell us about that transition to becoming a fashion model. Um. What do you mean? Like how 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 did you go from fashion designer to become one of the recognizable faces? And actually, it's thanks to Morocco that I transitioned 
because I was working for three years as a stylist for guests and uh, I had the, uh, the producer, a music producer, Red One, who is an international music uh, producer. He was producing a, a song to promote Morocco with our government. And they were bringing to Morocco a lot of big artists like French Montana and the Yankee and Fifth Harmony and a lot of bloggers and YouTuber back then like Amanda Cerny. And they con he contacted me to be the, the lead model for the for the for the music video. They were gonna shoot it in Morocco to promote the country. Mm -hmm. So when he reached out to me, I said, No, 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 I'm I don't wanna be in it. I'm not a model, but I work for guests. And he, he said he wanted to make it like a Moroccan product. He's like, no, I want you to because I said, I can bring you all the guest models that you want, that you need. He said, no, no, it has to be Moroccan product with a Moroccan girl with the Moroccan model. And uh, so I said, oh, and by the way, the owner of guests is Moroccan. Why don't you let me style, style the music video? And so I introduced them and I ended up being the model of the music video and I styled the music video as well. So how how did it feel to be the first Arabian woman for uh, for guests? Um, well, it was meant to happen because it happened three years uh, after. But the, I think the timing was perfect because when I first met Mr. Paul Marciano, I was just going to be one of the models. And I think when I did it, the Arab, um, the Arab culture be was growing at the same time and was became stronger. So it kind of was the perfect timing because when we shot it, we put all the pictures in all the stores in Middle East, in all the streets of Dubai. So the perfect timing, it was, if I did it in the first time, it I was gonna be one model and he, they were gonna put me on their website there, but my identity made me stronger and it was all over the news that I was the first Arabic model to do it. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I took my time and, you know, learned the industry and grow slowly actually helped me understand what would like where I stand and build my image. So was it, was there a, welcome receptions or strong reactions to uh to your campaign uh it was definitely a positive strong reaction positive people were very happy like all the celebrities that i know um arabic they reposted and uh it was a specific capsule campaign for middle east like nothing no cleavage like the clothes that anyone can wear in the Middle East and Morocco. So everyone appreciated and the brand kind of also, you know, did a lot of promotion through this in these countries. So when, for the first time, when you saw yourself on a billboard or a magazine cover, what was going through your head? Well, the first time it was actually Times Square with the Hadid eyewear, the it's the eyewear company from the Hadid family, and I flew from LA to Moro to to New York overnight just to take a picture and go back. I was so sad I couldn't make it to Dubai for the pictures, but for the the first time. But the second time that happened, I had to fly and see it, and it's always impressive because every day I would have someone send me a picture. You know, like people drive next to it and. It's, it's impressive to see someone you know, imagine. So people are like, hey, I know her. So imagine what you feel when you actually see yourself. Like even when I see one of my girlfriends, I'm like, even if the people with me don't know her, I'm like, that's my friend. You know, like if I see a girl on the billboard, so imagine the feeling if it's myself. It's just, it's crazy. Sometimes I'm like, wow. Now, now you've been you've been in this, uh, this side of the industry uh, for quite some time. Is it? Culturally, do you in your head, do you still play it conservatively on what kind of campaigns you can choose? Like, for example, no swimwear still? Yes, that's the rule. No swimwear. It's my only rule, actually, because um, I think even uh, countries, Middle Eastern, they're more and more open minded. So they were it's like I can wear dresses, I can wear um, more cleavage they're more they're being more accepting and like 
it's no more shocking because the world is completely changing. But swimsuit, I just for myself, not even for people, I don't feel comfortable showing my myself in a swimsuit because you know, like for my parents, for my grandparents, uh, they don't understand my grandparents' social media and my grandmother would have a heart attack if she sees me, you know, it's something that is totally new to them. And it's just for me to have peace, you know, in my family and not shock them. And for myself as well, I I just want to keep that for myself and that's it. Oh, overall, it sounds like your family is very supportive of uh, your career. They are supportive and they are not because they're very supportive because they're very proud of me, but they would not agree all the time because they would rather have me have a private life. And because they they also see what the other side, the risk that comes with it, you know, people that are jealous or try to hurt you because we don't see people when they see you, they just see like you're shining and like, you're successful, but you don't see all the hate on the side, all the people you knew from before that had the same goals and didn't make it. Sometimes you have friends, you had to go, you know, you had to grow apart and they're jealous or sometimes people you don't even know, like when you, when you become not even successful, when you become known or like a public figure, you have enemies you actually don't even know because someone is sitting at home hating on you. And sometimes mm. it goes, they go ahead and try to hurt you, but you don't even know them. So my, and it happens to me a few times that I, you know, been in a situation with people that try to hurt me that I don't know them. And my parents went through this with me and, you know, they're, they're being protect, pro protective and for them, they just always have this worried somehow that, so they're like, it's good, but you know, <laughs> they're worried. It's normal. So how do you, uh, mentally, you know, put up a defense against that for yourself? Uh, I just understood, uh, first of all, I don't compare myself because sometimes I would be so depressed and cry for three hours and then I would put my dress on, my my makeup, and then I go and I, I'm in this big event, all glamorous, and when people see me, they're like, oh, you have it all. Well, you know, I have my my struggles, my personal relationships, my families, my family. And uh, I just, and everyone is the same. So first rule is I don't compare myself because people only post whatever achievements and success. It's very rare that someone's going to post everything they go through uh, or, you know, and the second, I just, cleared my surrounding i only have family and like very 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 few friends people you can trust because in this industry it's a lot of competition and you have to protect yourself from everything so i have people i know in the industry they're like friends but like to get close to me it's just people that i knew from that i grew up with or my family so do you ever have like that uh um that tendency to go back what you used to do, or do you want to keep on for moving forward into something bigger and better things? I love growing. I love discovering things. You know, when I started, it was actually, there was a, they were going on the media. Someone like a, a reporter in Morocco was going on the media and saying that, oh, she doesn't know who she is. One day she's a stylist, the next day she's a mo model, and the day after she's... But that's how people grow. And mm -hmm. and at some point, I was it made me insecure. I was like, oh my God, maybe they're right. Maybe I have to stick to something. Like I look like I'm all over the place, but this is growth. Every part, every part of the journey was magic, and I enjoyed it, and it lead me to something else. If I wasn't a stylist, I wouldn't have been a model. If I wasn't a model, I wouldn't have been acting. So why if the opportunity opportunity comes to me, why would I say no? If guest comes to me and I was a stylist and say, you want a model, why would I say no? Because I decided I'm stubborn. I just want to be a model or I just want to be a stylist. I go with the flow. When something comes to me and I feel I'm ready for it, I'll take it and it leads to something else. And that's what's magic. You grow and you learn and you make mistakes and, you know. Well, your journey uh, leads you to another chapter of acting. 
And you made your acting debut in a film called Bully High, which I actually have seen uh, uh, m- months ago. And it's a wonderful film where you play a young mother there. Could you talk about on how that came about for you? Yeah, so that's as a model, I was invited to an event and I was on the red carpet and Bill was with the cast next to me and a, a publicist actually introduced us. And I said, I'm from Morocco. He said, oh, my God, I'm doing, I'm from Morocco. I'm Muslim. He said, I'm doing a movie about this and I need an actress. So, you know, by me being a model, I was there and it came to me. And then after literally two weeks, we were shooting and I'm so happy to, the timing was perfect because it's, uh, it's the, the message is very strong and it's an important issue now uh, that in the world. And I think it's a great lesson to learn from the movie. Wow, that that is amazing. I I feel I feel like you are so fortunate to meet the right people at the right time in your life. It happens to every exactly. Some people make joke. They're like, you just show up somewhere and actually meet people that she, that gets you things like this. I'm like, you listen, but you know what I answer? I put myself in that place. Because I packed my my clothes and I moved from Morocco to the U.S. and I went to school. And so I took my place. I I created the opportunities for me to be there. And that's what's important. You have to be out there. We cannot plan our life. You can only plan what you can do and the rest will come to you. So if you want to get something, sometimes you don't have to to have the plan from A to B. You need to start working towards it and put your energy in it and the right thing will come to you. You will attract it. But you have to start by putting yourself out there and start working toward that goal. That is true. Technically, you did work hard to to be here. So that that is wonderful. Now, um, for, the, for the movie itself, could you um, culturally, the significance of uh, wearing a hijab, especially here in the United States, what what's your what's your take on a theme like that? Uh, I respect. Uh, it's it's a symbol. It's it's a pro, it's a personal choice for every woman to wear hijab or no. It's no one uh, right to say if it's right or wrong, and no woman should be judged because she's wearing a hijab or insulted or any kind of mistreated or anything because it's it's a personal choice it's in our culture it's the muslim culture if it doesn't mean it's just her if she feels better about it it's her right to wear it and nobody can say otherwise it sounds like you had a great experience um, acting it on um, bill's production does that mean you want to do more in this uh, industry Yes, of course, I would love to be more involved in movies. And um, I actually also, before that, I was one year TV presenting on a fashion TV show on NBC, which is the biggest TV channel in the Middle East. I was presenting um, a fashion uh, a fashion TV show. So uh, I'm, I'm going toward television more and more. And I definitely want to do more movies, be in the big screen and do TV hosting and work, yeah, be more, more on television for sure. Well, sex and well said. So do we have uh, personal upcoming projects uh, for ourselves in the future? Yes, I am working. T- I want to launch, launch my hair product company and I'm working on this. Uh, it's my goal to launch it this year. And so that's what I've been focusing between this and acting and that's it. <laughs> you're 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 so quite busy doing all these different projects and traveling the world. Um, I I can't I can't say I I'm, I'm not jealous, but I am. So <laughs> thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation. You're a wonderful person, and you know what? Keep on growing because I think you're going to get even higher than this. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. <laughs>